Hello everybody and welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Wendy Yee. Today we're doing something that people have asked for a while. This is a two-player games list. That's right. So slightly inspired by Valentine's Day. Uh, this is something that, What's yeah. What's that? Um, it's a thing. We don't really celebrate it. But it's a thing. Yeah, yeah! There we go. Yeah, take that, St. Valentine. You got beheaded by the Roman government for performing illegal marriages for what? For Cupid arrows and chocolate sales, baby! Okay, I do like chocolate. I take it back. Will you buy me chocolate? I like uh, I like early Roman era saints that have been completely forgotten for commercialism. Yay! So anyway, well, the, but two player games. This is a yeah. couples games, and this is not exclusively that. But I mean, this is a these are games that you and I have played together that we just the two of us love just jamming out on. Yeah, so we don't normally do combined top 10 lists, but we decided that we we're going to do it together because we really do have our favorites that we tend to play more. Um, and so we want to share these with you. Let's yeah. go ahead and get started. So we've done a combined, but then there's a little secret, a little surprise at the end where we're going to... Spoilers, Chris. So this 10, as you said, combined. Mm -hmm. We agreed on the order of this. And we're doing one list because there would be a massive amount of crossovers. Um, but then we each also picked separate ones that would not have crossed over. So at the end, we'll go over a few extra. So now let's really get started. Now let's do it. Uh, starting at number 10. All right, number 10 is Fugitive. Now this is a little head-to-head -head asymmetrical game where one person is the fugitive playing cards, trying to run away, and the other one is doing a deduction game, trying to draw cards to see where the fugitive's not and figure out where the fugitive is. This so is it's a cute little game. Absolutely, it's so great because it feels like a hidden movement game, mm -hmm. the card game. Excellent for two players. Um, it's the type of game you can just play and then swap sides, or with a second edition here, they encourage like, one of the things you can do is you can play the same side over and over again. Whichever side wins gets a little extra card, the switch system. Bonus. Uh, and gets a little bonus. Yeah, for sure. So Fugitive is a ton of fun. Yep. So, yeah, a couples game that we really enjoy. Uh, number nine, a cooperative two-player trick-taking game called Sale. Uh, this is from All Play. Has a fantastic cover that kind of mm -hmm. bleeds into the background. <laughs> wow, it really does. I didn't notice that. <laughs> yes, your hearts really stick out on it. Though your little yeah, uh, all my love person. for all the games. So cooperative two-player trick-taking game. There's only a few suits. I think there's three suits in this game. As you play a card out, based on how your uh, co-player, not your opponent, but how the other player reacts to it, mm -hmm. you can perform combinations of not just the numbers but the symbols to do different things in the game. Yeah. So sales a lot of fun. I think that the the communication in it is very slight, but it's very very important. Right. And so this is one of those ones that um, I think has just got the right amount of a little bit of communication, so you can truly cooperate, but it doesn't require, you know, like constant conversation. Yeah, exactly. How are we going to navigate the ship? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? All based on like at the start of each round, primarily like we you slide swap a, card. a couple cards. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And so uh, I think it's great. Um, pr primarily, I do recommend if you play it and you're like, we're going to keep coming back to this one, get that little expansion pack on mm, the All Play website because yeah. it adds more variety to it instead of just more difficulty. Yeah, I agree. Because I don't necessarily like, comp like, not complicated, but I don't like hard to win cooperative games. I want them to be, to feel winnable and like playing level yes. five on this thing, you're like, Whoo! I don't think this is winnable. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. All right, next up is Seven Wonders Duel. So this is a tableau builder like Seven Wonders where you're building all these cool stuff in front of you. It's got a lot of the same um, theme behind it, but it creates, or like really makes it a two player game. So as you can see, there's kind of that pyramid of cards. So you're slowly revealing cards to each other as you're flipping over things. But then there's also a tug of war for military instead of just, hey, I have the most military, I get a ton of points, but instead is this back and forth trying to um, end the game, honestly. So yeah. there's some, it's some really good stuff. I love that there's that military is an alternate win, like straight up win loss, mm -hmm. and so is collecting science tokens, and so it it really takes those familiar elements, puts a new spin on drafting, and puts a new spin on I'm crushing you on points, but you might you're like one card away from winning on science. You're like, yeah. Oh. So I think that's great. I just like that it tightens it up a lot better for two players because playing regular Seven Wonders with that extra computer player thing, it's just fiddly. Yeah. It was fine. We did it a lot, we actually, back then. Because we played two-player games a lot of times, even when they weren't really meant for two. Yeah. So something like this came out, and I was like, ooh, it actually took time to grow on me. I it think, did. Yeah, but this one has, has moved up for us both. Definitely. All right. So number seven is a brand new, or a much newer one, 
Uh, and this one did not take time to grow. I mean, it's called Beer and Bread. I like both of oh, these. Oh, yeah. These ideas of balancing two different kinds of victory points. Beer points, bread points, and multi-use cards in a head-to-head -head drafting game. Ho, ho, ho! When there's so much interaction, even if I collect too many resources, I have to give Chris some and vice versa. So there's these moments where you're like, ooh, I really need, you know, three water. Oh, man, this is going to give me too much of stuff. Now I have to give some to Chris. Like, I love that. There's optional engine building kind of things. There's just some really cool ways. And then... Um, to play. And then, yeah, like you said, having to balance that getting enough beer and enough bread because you balance out those victory points at the end. Oh, it's a good two-player game. But every card that you're like, I want to tuck this under my board for a special ability, but I need the resources, but I also need this other thing first. So I'm going to take, I think I'll take this one because I'm going to pass the cards to Wendy. And I don't think she wants that card, so I hope I get it back. Mm -hmm. There's now, a lot. I was honestly surprised at how much this was played on this year's Dice Tower Cruise because it was played a ton the previous year's cruise. Yeah. And it's not just that like hot new game anymore. And yeah, it's but still, it's, it's still solid. I think this is one that people are going to be talking about as a good two player game for a long time. To come. I think so. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next up is number six Sky Team, Cult of the New. That's what we are, Chris. Cult I guess. Cult of the New. So Sky Team is a game where one person is a pilot, one person is a co-pilot, and this is another one of those cooperative games that has minimal communication. Um, but you're trying to land this plane without killing everybody. Luckily, if you do kill everyone, you don't see all the blood and gore. It's a flight simulator. <laughs> no, this is a great, like this, it kind of like with sail, right? That limited communication, what you're putting out, it feels almost like trick-taking style of communicating, mm -hmm. like information shared but with dice and the extra modules. So once you get familiar with the game and you're like, yeah, we got this down, you throw on like icy landing strip. You throw on uh, you to, fuel depletion. Yeah, maintain your fuel and just stuff. And it's really cool to be able to see like how what angle you're coming in at as you're settling. Like there's some cool components as well as the actual game is fun. The modules are very interesting and thematic. So Sky Team, good pick. Is a huge winner. Yeah. yeah. I like how you said, good pick, Wendy. Good, good pick job. us. Good job. All right, number five is the first game I think that came to my mind. This would be definitely in my, like, personally in my top two, probably. Mm -hmm. I, I would debate which one. Uh, but collectively, we decided to sit right here. Number five This is called Agricola. All mm -hmm. creatures big and small. So I put here the box cover for the big box edition because I think that this is what you can find at this point. Okay, and uh, that has a lot of the extra buildings in it? It has both, uh, yeah, it has both expansions called more buildings and even more buildings. Good, good, uh, good imagination there. Inspired. When I came up with that title. Yeah, for sure. This to me is like the most fun parts of Agricola, right? Is just the the animal husbandry, mm -hmm. managing your farm, building up the fences, and this the actions are so tight. You have three workers each round. You'll never get more or less or anything. But you're sitting there going like, Do I grab this huge pile of sheep? I don't have enough fencing for all of them. How much longer are they going to last? When is it going to take all the sheep? And I love that tension. It does that thing where worker placement spots build up and accrue more resources each round that they're not used. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you've got that spot that gets one wood every round, and you're like, no one's going to go there until it becomes four wood. And you're like, maybe someone will go there. And then it's five, and you're like, oh, i got to take it. I have to get first player. I yeah. need it. Yeah. Yeah. It, this is everything that I think is great about Agricola distilled down. And with the more buildings it then has the same feel as those cards you draft at the beginning of Agricola yes. in a much smaller game. Perfect for and two players. And it's so much more digestible, I feel like, than getting a stack of 10 cards in Agricola. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So this is a good one. Yep. Um, number four is Splendor Duel. So this takes Splendor, which is a game that I really enjoy and you think is fine, right? Um, yeah, I'm putting I'm, words in your mouth, clearly. Those are my words. I, you just shoved them back. I think Splendor's okay. Oh, not fine. It's okay, just to clarify. Um, but Splendor Duel, what it does is instead of just being able to take whatever chips you want, you instead have this board and you take a row or a diagonal of them and um, progressively that reduces down. And so if you want to refill that board and get a ton of choices, you have to give this little, uh, I don't know what it is, like a little scroll to, to the other person. Oh, the favor. How the dare favor. you take, how dare you take the theme out of Splendor? There's so much theme. <laughs> it also adds pearls, which is just another, like, hard-to-get resource that some cards require and some don't. Um, but yeah, you give someone a favor, and then they get a bonus whenever they want to spend it. Um, and it's just little bonuses, but you're constantly giving them back and forth, and you're interacting on that board, withdrawing the chips. And so it's a it's a fun little bit of adding that 
that, I don't know, back and forth. What's the word I'm looking for? Interaction. Repartee. Oh, that was definitely the word I was looking for. I don't even know yeah. what that word means. It means to partay again. Oh, to parlay? Something like to that. To speak? Yeah. No, but those favor, like, just having a favor and be like, I can grab one chip anytime I want. You'll never know. Like, it's... Ah, it. This is the same thing Bruno Catala did with Splendor, or with um, Seven Wonders Duel, mm -hmm. where, like, just that little bit of extra stuff, just a few different win conditions, elevates a game into something just, like... Really awesome. Really great. Perfect for two players. I love this. That one was an instant 10 for me. I rarely <laughs> get games 10 when they first come out because I'm like, no, you have to grow on... You have to grow on me. You have to stand the test of time to be a 10 in my book. And I was like, well, Splendor stand at the t like stood the test of time, and this just made it better. So Sure. It's got that repartee. It number does. two is... Or number three, rather, is Jaipur. This <laughs> type of game that stood the test of time for us. We got this very early in our gaming... Oh, yeah. In our marriage. And... Just drawing cards, collecting sets, trading them in to collect lots of those little victory point tokens you see there on the side. But also if you trade in a set of three, you get like a three level bonus chip. If you trade in a set of four, you get a four level bonus chip or the Which or the, the majestic fives. Which and, is magic. Yeah. It's so good. And like there's little ways to you can take one card at a time or you can trade out cards to grab multiple. And it has such a beautiful tension of like... It really does because you, you want. don't want to reveal something good to the other person. But at the same time, you could take all the camels and camels are super useful. And they're extra five points if you have the most. You're like, I can take all the camels and then I'm revealing five cards to Chris. Um, and it could be all really good cards that he then takes. Especially if he has camels because then he could just like load them out <laughs> and replace them. This is one that honestly, I feel like the last couple times we played it, it's been on Board Game Arena. Just yeah. sitting next to each other on the couch. Um, but I've loved this, and it's such a good two-player game. It, it is so it's so good. It's one of the few games where, like, those bonus chips I was telling you about are a variable amount of points. It's like, oh, the, the level four cards are, like, four, five, or six points. Yeah. I tend to dislike that, but in this one, because it's just head-to-head, -head, because the um, when you trade in cards and you get those goods tokens, those have a fixed amount of points, and they mm -hmm. deplete. So you might even just trade in a set of one to grab the four-point chip so that your opponent yeah. can. But, like, having that little bit of mystery, I think it works to just the right degree in Jaipur. I think it does. I concur. All right, number two is Mandala. This is a, um, a card game where you have this nice little cloth mat in front of you, and you're trying to complete two mandalas or two of these circles. And they get completed when there is at least one card of every single color in that circle. Now, the deal is, is that depending on whether you play in the mountain in the middle or you play on your side or the other player plays on their side, um, you can only ever have those colors in one of those three spots. So if you're putting those black cards in the middle, I can never use them to put black cards in front of me. And so it's just that interesting tension of like, are you gonna complete this one? And because we're working on two, it's like, oh, well, I don't wanna finish that one and I don't have a good card for this one. So I'm just gonna keep adding cards in the middle to this one and make it better. And it's just a majority. You want more cards on your side mm -hmm. when all the colors are represented because the cards in the middle you start scoring. If you have more cards, you get to grab them first, and then the other player, then you, then the other player. Yeah. That tension is beautiful in this one. It never becomes mean feeling, mm -hmm. but sometimes you drop like four red cards on your side, and I'm like, I, I needed <laughs> to have done that myself. Yeah, I ah! have this full of red cards. Now what do I do? Can I even add any to this mandala? Yeah. So it's just it's got really good tension, and then the value of each individual colored card changes as you collect them. So the ones you collect earlier are worth less and the ones you collect later are worth more. And so an orange card, to me, could be worth six points at the end of the game and only worth one point for you. And you're like, am I gonna take it for the one point so Woody doesn't get six? Or am I gonna try to get those two five point cards and just let her have that six point card? You know, like, it's, oh, yeah. Delicious good decisions. is the way Very to good. describe this. There's a sequel game to this that some people have been getting called Patterns. Mm -hmm. Same designers, same idea, mm -hmm. uh, plays a little bit differently. I'm, just, I'm so excited to finally get it. I don't know why. Look out, games. Please. Please. Send our way? Yes. It's Mandala. Is it? Okay. Oh, such a good yeah, game. Yeah, good. Uh, and then our number one, all of the games up to this point have been noticeably, exclusively two-player games. Yes. This is the first one that's not, but... In our marriage, in our gaming, it almost it feels almost is like it is. Yeah. It's called King Domino. So the reason for this is, and we and we weren't 
exclusively trying to make two-player games. This but like, happened. These are a lot of our favorite ones to play, just the two of us. Uh, but King Domino has an excellent variant mm -hmm. where in order to use all of the tiles, depending on the player count, you typically use fewer or more tiles. Uh, and in two players, you can use all of them, but you have to build a larger kingdom. Seven by seven, baby. This is the best way to play King Domino. And that's why this is on our number one, because you get to use all the tiles. You get huge multipliers because you're multiplying crowns times the region, you know, amount of squares in the region that they're in. And it's just fun to be able to see all the tiles and grow this huge kingdom. I love it. I think it's so much more strategic because you have to not block yourself off early on. Yeah. And you're like, just to be able to grow, because you can change where that center is, you just kind of build around it. And so it's less easier to visualize from the beginning. Like there's just so much more to do. And the choices, man, the choices when you're placing your meeples out, because you have two meeples instead of um, just one, then you're placing them out and you have to make those choices. You're like, ooh, okay, I can put two together at the same time, or maybe you can't put two together at the same time, just depending on where they were last round. Yeah, there's, so and every weird. decision is still simple. Mm -hmm. And that's what's the, my favorite part about this, is that the framework expands and the decision space grows, but each decision is still so simple mm -hmm. that it feels like something that this is we could pull out on a, you know, we're tired, it's been a long day, we want to play something small together yes. that still feels rewarding. Seven by seven variant on King Domino. Very is, good. Is our favorite. Well, as teased and as requested, um, we're going to do some of our individual games. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with mine. Uh, my number five is Codenames Duet. So this is a two player only version of Codenames. And honestly, it's kind of tricky uh, because you're giving each other clues back and forth and you're trying to get each person to guess um, what all of the words are that you're trying to find, all the, the code names, <laughs> right? But the, the assassin is like the opposite on some of them. So you have the same words in front of you and you're like, okay, Robin Hood is my, like one one thing I want you to guess, but then for you, it's the assassins so you don't want me to guess it. It's, so it's just interesting. Yeah, so it's so fascinating. Like I really enjoy this version of Codenames. All right, next up. Oh yeah, they're all mine, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Lost Cities. This one, honestly, we haven't played in a while. I think I like this one a lot more than you and I think that's why. Um, it's grown on me though. Yeah, so in this you are trying to complete, you're trying to lay out um, number cards and you're trying to balance out what the other person is so you can win the row and the column or whatever. And um, it's just fascinating. This is one of those games where you're trying to figure out what numbers the other players have and you're trying to figure out what's still in the deck and you're trying to kind of like, I don't know, shoot from the hip. It's so fun because it's just numbers. It's just numbers one through 10, but you're shooting from the hip and I just really enjoy it as the game progresses, trying to figure out, you know, what's what chunks can I win? You like a Ryder can eat you game. <laughs> oh, I know. I feel sad about that. Man, it's a tragedy. Okay, next one up is Ticket to Ride. Um, I just put vanilla Ticket to Ride, but honestly, I, I enjoy this the most at two players. It's fine at four players, it's fine, you know what I mean, at higher player counts, but for some reason, Ticket to Ride, when you only get to have, you don't use the double routes, you just use, you know, one single route per those, and it just, it leaves the map open, it's really easy to look at the other player and go, okay, are they gonna get in my way? Can I get in their way? Like, I just feel like it's more of a mind game with that in a way that I enjoy. So, mm. Ticket to Ride, do you have thoughts on that? Do you wanna play Ticket to Ride Legacy? Let's do it. All right, cool. Oh, that's going to be fun. I'm excited for that. Uh, number two is Feast for Odin. Everyone knows this is like one of my most favorite games of all time, but the Norwegian's expansion really tightened this up for two players and it made it amazing. And this is one of those games that's so big that I don't feel like you need four players because honestly, they probably won't fit on your table. Like it's hard enough to fit everything in a two player game. So this one, absolutely ideal at two players. Love it. And yeah, having that expansion that tightens everything up, it's so good. Yeah, Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree. And then finally, number one is Sea of Two. Sea of Two is one of those cooperative games that like you can almost plan it out from the very beginning. Like there's a few little things that come out randomly, but this is one of those that you just want to look at the system and you just want to kind of like, okay, let's try to figure it all out. And I feel like that's so much harder to do with three or four players because it ends up being an alpha player problem because there's just so much crunchiness. Whereas in a two player game, especially playing with Chris, um, we can sit down and we can figure out that that math together and be like, okay, you do this and I do this, which means you need to do this, but I need to do this. And so I just, I love it. I think that it's so much fun and that's, it's so much more ideal at two players and I love it. I love yeah. it so much. No, I mean, all good picks. Feast for Odin would be probably the closest to my 
on the and on our taste, shared list. Yeah. And I almost put it, but I, I don't know. I guess I kind of wanted to favor the ones that we talked about together. Yeah. So <clears throat> my honorable mentions here are going to start off first with a game that no one talks about. It's called Dragon Prince Battle Charge. <laughs> Uh, and this is a this is a little bit of a skirmish game. It's a little mm. bit more out of my wheelhouse, but I really I'm enamored with the show and the characters and being able to mix any two characters onto the same team, shuffle their cards together, a little bit like Smash Up, and then you just go head to head against someone else with two characters. And all the characters jive well. It's very fun, tactical combat kind of a game. Well, thematically, it's so interesting because there's points in the show where you're like, okay, I can see those two teaming against up against this person. Yeah, it's which is funny. fascinating because it's such a sweet, cute show. It is. Yeah. For so it's like weird that you could have that happen. But yeah, no, it's great. Um, number four for me is Great Plains. This is one of the lookout spiel two-player small box games that you don't like. <laughs> it feels so abstract to me. We had most of the other. You had Mandala on you know, on the shared list, yeah. right? But this is an abstract area control game, area majority. Mm -hmm. um, it's. But the thing is that everything about it, every single action is so important to the game. It feels like there's no, like, jockeying or positioning turns. It's just like, I go here to get the special power token. And you're like, I go here to assert dominance in the scoring area. And I'm like, oh, ooh, should I have done that? Every yeah. move feels so important. And it's in a very simple little game. Yeah, I feel like so many of those moments, I'm like, <coughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> My number three, Unmatched. <clears throat> This is a game that's been growing on me, especially since playing the co-op one, but just head-to-head. -head. You've been playing this a lot with our daughter. I've been playing a lot, yeah. <clears throat> uh, just in, in general. Um, I th possibly my favorite two-player box is Little Red and Beowulf. Two very cool characters. <laughs> uh, going over to number two, Targi. A, from the Cosmos two-player line, worker placement game where row and column matter, and then intersections and stuff. I love this one so much. Uh, what, what did you say about Splendor for me? It's okay. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I didn't love this one. Yeah, you think it's fine. I think it's, it's brilliant. Fine. And then lastly, one that uh, is definitely a me pick and not a one to pick is Blitzkrieg. Oh, yeah. Paolo Moore is Blitzkrieg. I played this more than I probably wanted to play it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good. The title action, oh. the title laying, the, the tug of war. I don't tend to love tug of war, but this one has so many going on and so many rewarding choices yeah. outside of just like pulling the marker back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this one's phenomenal. That is funny that most of these I'm like meh about. They're a I little bit more combative. They're definitely more list. you games, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Those are the two player games that we have uh, that we've played the most uh, together, mm -hmm. and then also yeah, our, our separate picks there as well. That's right. So I hope you have a good, happy Valentine's or non Valentine's Day. Yeah. If you celebrate it, enjoy it. If not, do like me and let's go make some buffalo wings. Yeah, so good. All thanks, right. thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. And tell us in the comments uh, what two-player games you love.